Today I have a M65-C1 power supply that was sent to us for repair. Unfortunately, the customer mailed it in a padded envelope instead of a box, so it arrived in two pieces. The first thing we're gonna do is get both of these pieces back together. We're gonna use actually just super glue. So I'm just putting a little bead, oh, a huge bead, wow. We're gonna put a little bead here across the crack, put it back together, and then let it dry. So now that our super glue has finished curing, we have one solid piece but it is kind of still fairly fragile. So what we're gonna do here is add some solder to reinforce our joints. The way we're gonna do this is by removing some of the coating on the board, and we're gonna be exposing the copper. And now that we have the copper exposed, we're, I guess, essentially gonna be welding these two pieces together since we're gonna be soldering them with a very large blob. So we're gonna do this for all of the larger ground pads. So right here, right here, probably right here. So for these smaller ones over here, we're gonna bridge it with a wire to help reinforce. Uh, same over here, we're probably gonna put a wire here, here, here. Um, so this one, I believe actually the resistor is only on soldered on this side and not on that side. So we'll have to re-solder that. See, we'll probably just do a big blob here, big blob there. This should be okay with the blob as well. This one, I believe on the front side, we're gonna have to fix the transistor, probably actually replace it entirely. Yep, so it looks like that got ripped out. We have have a few other components just like that across the board. This capacitor will have to be replaced. I think only one of the legs is actually soldered in, the other one got ripped out. This jumper right here is affected. We'll have to check these capacitors. I think they might be okay. Let's see, let's just check that right now. Oh, and then of course, this jumper is completely broken. Okay, and actually, yeah, these capacitors are okay because they're on this side, so they're not gonna be affected by the crack. Again, we'll probably do a blob here, blob there another blob right here. And for this smaller one, I'll probably go ahead and put a wire and then a blob over here. So we'll get started by just reconnecting all of these broken contacts and then we'll go ahead and worry about the components on the front. So I reinforced the large ground pad on the other side of the board. I'm gonna do this side next and then we'll do some in the center to just help reinforce it. Right, and now that we have a nice clean surface, we'll go ahead and solder. Oh my, that just popped. But I think what's happening is I'm actually melting or, or burning the super glue that I put on there. The board shifted a little bit, which spurted some of the solder on my chest. That's why you wanna do protective glasses or just wear very large glasses like I am. All right, and as I said, now we're gonna do a couple of the ones that are in the center of the board. So some of these are actually a little harder to get through to the copper because some of the super glue actually seeped through and is protecting it. So that's why some areas require a little bit extra scratching. So I'm leaving some of the flux residue on there for right now, but we are gonna have to come back and do a full clean of this board afterwards. All right, I've gotten some of the major breaks. I'm gonna do one or two more, and then we're just gonna start making our way through from left to right. All right, so that should do it. We're gonna go ahead and start just going from left to right. So we have a total of 21 traces to fix and I just did one, two, three, four, five of the large ones. So I'm gonna go through and just do the rest right now. I have my voltmeter in DC mode, let's plug it in. We're gonna do a quick check here on our filter cap and we have 169 volts. Let's check to see if we have our 12 volts. 
and we have 19.18. That actually is normal. Even though it says 12 volts, um, this power supply does actually output 19 volts. I don't know why there's a difference, but a good working board always outputs 19 volts. So that means we are getting good output voltage. Um, the last thing we could do is test it with a main board plugged in and see if we get all of our other voltages to come up. So I don't have a full TV right now available for live testing this. So what I'm gonna do is use this little battery pack. It's gonna be three volts, two one and a half volt batteries in series. And we're going to connect it directly to the power supply to trick the power supply into thinking there is a main board signal telling it to turn on. So we're gonna do the black wire to ground, which is these two over here. All right, so our black wire is grounded, and the other one is the PS on, which is the sec top row, second from the right. So it's gonna be this one right here. And I wanna make sure it's not making contact with the other pin next to it. Wonderful. We're gonna flip this all over. So I am in DC mode on my multimeter. So I'm gonna check over here real quick, just make sure we still have our 12 volts. So it's showing the 19, which is normal for some reason for this main board. If I go over here to this connector and I go to our 24 volt lines, which are these over here, I am not getting my 24 volts. So if I turn this little guy on, cause it is off and recheck, our 24 volt is now active and working. So we're good there. Let's check our 12 volts over here on this connector. And again, that's the 19. So we have all of the voltages we want there. Now, the only thing is with this one, I am not getting our 3.5 and 5 volt to turn on. Uh, I believe it's probably just because I don't have the main board plugged in. It's probably sending a signal that I'm not sending right now. But looking at this board, it looks like I don't really have a problem. My major 12 and 24 volt lines are activated. So I think that we're all set here. So the last thing I wanna mention before we close it out, we do have a significant piece missing here. But if we take a look at it on the backside, it is actually only one grounding uh, trace that is removed and no longer making contact. And it doesn't actually matter because we have both a grounding screw over here as well as over here. So what that means is that both sides of that trace where it's cut are still grounded correctly. So it will not matter or affect the functionality of the power supply. So there you have it. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe and thank you for watching.